Democrats, the leadership, says the president left them in the dark about the airstrikes that killed Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. On the flip side, Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted this. If Iranian aggression continues, and I worked in an Iranian oil refinery, I would think about a new career. <laughs> That's a backhanded way of saying, watch out, Iran. With us now, North Carolina Republican Senator Tom Tillis, who happens to be on the Armed Services Committee. Senator, welcome to the program. Good to have you with us. Good morning, Stuart. Speaker Pelosi and Intel Chair uh, Adam Schiff complained today that the president left them in the dark about this killing. Do you think the president should have informed Adam Schiff in advance? No, I think these sorts of sensitive military operations, uh, the president has to keep things closely held. Of course, we'll be briefed on it. I think that they acted appropriately. And I'm uh, very happy the president acted de decisively against Soleimani. He's a terrorist. He's been engaged in terror for the better part of 20 years. And uh, what occurred yesterday was, I think, good for the United States and good for the Middle East region. You, sir, are in the United States Senate, where there is supposed to be a trial soon, a trial of President Trump on impeachment charges. Are we really going to put this man on trial and maybe remove the commander in chief from office? Are we really going to go through? with this? Well, let's take that in two parts. There's no way the president gets removed. The two articles of impeachment are ridiculous. The, the entire process in the House was a sham. Pelosi is sitting on the message to the Senate so that we can begin it. Um, I think at the end of the day, we may have to take a week or two to process it, particularly if we don't get agreement going into it. But I know how this movie is going to end, and it's going to end this way. It's going to end without the president's removal because the House didn't do their work. They've been trying to impeach the president for three years. They've unsuccessfully executed anything uh, and presenting anything to the Senate that has credibility. Constitutionally, we have to take it up, but I know how it ends. Um, would you say that the Republicans, both in the Senate and in the House and elsewhere, are united behind the president? The president and Secretary of State Pompeo said, look, had to do this because this guy, Soleimani, was planning another imminent attack. Is the country with him? Well, Stuart, they, let's put this in context. So we could talk about the maritime attacks and the, uh, and the things that Iran's been responsible for for the past year or so. But let's talk about what happened last week at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. And then talk about the chief terrorist for the Iranian nation is about 15 miles away from that very same embassy, do you think he was going there to de-escalate things or was he going there to plot the next wave of tensions in that area, putting American men and, men and women and U.S. interests at risk? The president acted decisively because I think there was a clear and present danger that if Soleimani was able to move through Iraq, that more Americans could be put at risk and our embassy could be put at risk. Is there a danger that the Iranians retaliate for this killing and then we escalate by retaliating against the retaliation. In other words, you get a tit-for-tat escalation which results in an out-and-out -out military clash between America and Iran. There is a what? danger there. You don't want to see that happen, I take it. Well, there's always that danger, Stuart. But let's take a look at the maritime attacks in the Gulf of Oman, the Persian Gulf, the attack on the Arabian oil facility. Most of those went largely unchecked. But when we all of a sudden see U.S. interest to put at risk like we did last week, there has to be a response. There has to be a consequence because Iran is going to continue to have these low level attacks and what they consider to be wins. And they need to understand that there is a proportionate response. I don't ever think that we'll do we'll act uh, offensively. We'll do the first strike. But Iran needs to understand our resolve in keeping uh, a stable, as stable as possible situation in the Middle East. But any time American interests are at risk, Iran needs to know they have to be held accountable for it. Now, at some point today, one would expect the president to appear directly and personally and make a statement about this killing. Uh, would you, it, it seems like there's a choice here. He could be in a sort, almost a celebratory mood, good riddance to this bad guy, just as he celebrated almost the death of al-Baghdadi. Or he could say, look, had to do it. We did this reluctantly. Had to do it because he was planning another attack. Which approach would you favor? 
I think the latter is probably the appropriate one. I don't think the president was looking. There have been other opportunities to take Soleimani out, but there's never been an instance where he's 15, he's a 20 minute cab drive away from the U.S. Embassy going into an area where he has proxies that are putting American interest at risk. I think that there was a clear and present threat to American interest. The president had the information. He acted decisively and we should applaud him for it. But I don't think that we should celebrate this moment, but for the fact that maybe our men and women in Iraq are a bit safer right now. We have to be ever vigilant. We know that the Iranians will try and have some sort of response. The Iranians need to hear from the president that there will be a consequence for any further escalation. Senator Tom Tillis, Republican, we appreciate you being with us today, sir, on an important day. Much obliged to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Yes, sir.